Hurricane Erin is on her way out, but is there anything else waiting to come in lurking out in the tropics? Well, I've looked at all of the latest data this afternoon that's come in through the course of the day and the evening, and some signs point here, some signs point there, but I'm going to show you exactly what I'm seeing here as uh, we get into a quick evening update. Certainly, we're going to start with Erin and see what the latest is there, but uh, she is on her way out. You can pick her out of the lineup really, really easy up here, spinning away in the North Atlantic. Still a very, very large hurricane. Looks more like a Pacific cane than a uh, an Atlantic cane. The southern side is getting really eroded away. You can see that very, very well with wind shear. It's getting caught up in the westerlies. It'll be extra tropical soon. The next item up for bids is this wave here north of the Antilles, bringing some showery weather down there. Another one out here in the Central Atlantic and another one rolling off the coast of Africa. So Africa is just sending us everything it's got. That's to be expected. This is hurricane season after all, and we're getting into the peak. There is Aaron in terms of wind gusts. We've got winds in the 20s, and uh, these are gusts, by the way. Uh, they're in the 20s uh, and into the 30s as you get on up here toward Long Island, but up and down the coastal areas expect gusty winds through the night, particularly up here in New York, Rhode Island, up here to Boston, and over into Cape Cod. We're seeing gusts 30 35 to 40 miles per hour. That's tropical storm force wind gusts when you start to get over 39 miles per hour. So we can still see those gusts. This will continue to pull away as you can see along the track. Choppy seas out here too, 10 to 20 foot waves right along the shore. And as you get farther out, you get into 30, 40, 50 foot waves. So we've got a lot of wave action, a lot of coastal erosion. Rip currents are continuing to be a risk and some surge. So be, be very, very careful if you go on out in uh, toward the coast and try to stay out of the water. We don't need any more water rescues needlessly out here. There's a funny looking image, isn't it, folks? This is the official forecast track, and this was going to dawdle around for a while, but it's actually picked up speed, and now it's looking to get out of here by Saturday. It's going to be completely away from <clears throat> even the Avalon Peninsula. Bermuda is still under tropical storm warnings, but all those other warnings have been discontinued along the coast of the United States. And you can see way out here into Tuesday, we're looking at uh, kind of a widening of the cone as this thing has turned extra tropical. It'll have tropical storm force winds still. But that's what's going on there with Aaron. You can see all the hurricane models from a category two taking it straight down to the death march here. And uh, some of them discontinue it fairly early and get it extra tropical. It's caught up in the westerlies and it will be making that transition. Here's an interesting track. You get over here, the GFS ensembles actually spin this thing around, getting it close to the UK and Ireland, places like that. So got to watch that as we get way on out into next week. But that's what's going on with Aaron. As far as the Atlantic goes, there she is. Got this area of 80% chance. So we've got this wave out here north of the islands. I showed you 80% chance of development now over the next 24, 48, 72 hours, somewhere in there we're expecting to develop, and it probably will take the name Fernand. Fortunately, you can see the direction of the cone here doesn't look like it's going to bother anybody, except maybe it'll clip Bermuda if it does develop at all. And looks like it will. Here's an area of disturbed weather that's not going to probably develop and it's not going to bother anybody if it does. And then this area down here in the central Atlantic has now a 50% chance of development. So we've got a whole fruit basket out here, cherry, lemon, and an orange down here. And uh, this will continue to move to the west, but it's going to encounter hostile conditions in about 48 hours or even less than that. So if it does develop at all, it will not persist and it will uh, be discontinued itself. So that's what we're looking at. Now, if we take a look here and see, we're going to look at a couple of model runs and a couple of ensemble runs and see what's going on. So this is the European from earlier this afternoon. There goes Aaron. The next little wave is right here. You can barely make it out. It's just a cluster of thunderstorms. European actually gets a couple of closed contours here and then takes it on up out to sea, all right? So we're not really looking at much going on there. These next few waves, it uh, really doesn't do very much with it. We get on out here toward Tuesday and Wednesday of next week. Man, I'm not seeing very much going on here with the European operational. We don't always wanna, we don't ever wanna rely on one operational run to tell us anything. We just wanna see what it shows and see how it compares to everything else. It does get a frontal zone kind of hung up here off the coast and bring something out of the Gulf over Florida and then try to develop it. But it's very weak and I wouldn't expect much to come out of that, but we'll watch it anyway. Here's the GFS. Let's see what it does. There goes Aaron. Here's the next little wave. Now it's a little bit more enthusiastic. So it, it gets it on down here into the 980, 
970, 977, takes it right over Bermuda, really. And so Bermuda, you got to watch this. It could develop into a tropical storm or hurricane just because the GFS says it doesn't mean it will, but it's something that's on the table. So we're going to watch and, and certainly it could do that, but eventually it's going to move off and follow Aaron into the ocean of death up there in the North Atlantic. And then what else happens as we go on through the afternoon? This is the 18Z run, by the way. So it's the uh, later in the afternoon run. And eventually it gets a tropical wave down here into the Caribbean. Look what happens. It starts to get into the Gulf and develop. Boy, if something gets into the Gulf and it's organized and there's not any shear down there, thing's going to take off. There's rocket fuel down there, folks. Undisturbed water that's been sitting there all season just waiting for something to get in. And it brings a very strong looking hurricane into Texas. Now, don't take that at face value. You, of course, don't do that. Uh, got to look at the ensembles. You got to look at the pattern. Here's the European ensemble, and you can see a lot of members are developing. There goes Aaron up there. A lot of members are developing this. This is 48 hours out, folks. So this is going to be sometime on Saturday. All right, so we're going to move this along. We got this other little one down here. It's trying to develop. So several of the members develop that too. Not a lot of them, but some do. A lot of them will develop this first one, and eventually it recurves. Got a little action coming off the coast. Not really concerned about that. That'll head out to sea. But look what happens down here. This is the one that we would be concerned about way down here, entering into the Caribbean. And look what happens. It just dissipates. Why does that happen? Well, we're going to take a look at that in a second. And just so you know, the GFS Ensemble pretty much does the same thing. If we roll it along, not many even develop that low one at all. And if I just advance this along, you would see that nothing happens. So that's what's going on there. Look what, so, you know, so we have to ask ourselves, what's the problem here? Well, look at this. You've got, let me get this on a better display. There we go. Water temperatures really aren't the problem. I mean, once you get over here and toward the islands, you're talking about mid 80s. I mean, that's that's good. That's really good water temperatures. Get on here to the Caribbean and the Gulf. It's boiling hot. And then you can see the, the little uh, cooler area left by air and it makes its way on up there. But uh, water temperatures aren't the problem. So what is? Well, Ben Knoll has an idea. He's a, a, a meteorologist. He posts on Twitter all the time and uh, got some good images. I wish I could make this graph a little bit bigger. But one of the problems, there's several. One of them is that we have sinking air over the Atlantic that is dominating the Atlantic. If you want convet you want tropical systems to thrive, you need instability, you need rising motion, rising air, kind of a background of that. When you have sinking air, it squelches convection. Convection is rapidly rising air, and that's what you need. You need that instability. Well, first uh, you know, week here in the series is uh, August 22nd, and that's a lot of sinking air. You get on out here into the week of August 30th, you still got sinking air. This is the Atlantic here. Let me draw this so you can kind of get a fix on it. This is Atlantic down here. Well, let's delete that. That's terrible. Let's draw it again. This is the tropical Atlantic right in that box, okay? There's where your sinking air is. Now watch this. What happens when we get into the first week of September? Ooh, now we've got rising air out here, okay? So that's, that's something that we got to keep in the back of our minds the next couple of weeks. Got sinking air. Then we start to get into a pattern of rising air in the week of the 15th. The next week, more more background conditions favoring tropical development. So as we get in toward the peak of hurricane season, we could see the um, background state set itself up and be more supportive of tropical development. The other thing we need to look at is dry air. Look at this. So we've got a big, here's the here's our development region again and into the Caribbean. I'm going to draw the circle here. Watch, watch in here. Look at this. That's the, that's the area that we're, we're concerned about, okay? A lot of brown in there. These little waves come in and uh, try to sneak under it maybe a little bit, but you've got a lot of brown to work with. So these waves get in here to the Caribbean, and there's just tons and tons. This is 144 hours out, so we're looking now at 156, so next Wednesday, Thursday. Still plenty of dry air out here in the Gulf, in the Caribbean, and finally get some moisture coming off as we get on in toward August the 30th, which is sort of the start of the period that might become more favorable. So we'll see how that shakes out, but running this out, a lot of dry air, and that may be starts to work northward with time, so that would be a little bit more favorable out in time for tropical development. The other thing is wind shear. We talk about this a lot too. Look at this. A lot of reds out here. Reds are not good for tropical development. You need blues or whites where you have below normal wind shear and the reds are higher than normal wind shear. So we get on out here to Sunday and uh, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday of next week. Still got plenty of shear in the Caribbean. This big, big blob. You see this thing coming off of uh, North America here? Look at this. This is a big time fall front that's coming in, folks, and it is going to kill anything that approaches the coast. So not looking for any development, and if we see any, it's going to 
back on out to C and get returned to sender real fast, quick, and in a hurry. That's what's going to happen there. But look, look what happens as we get on here toward August 30th. We start to see an, an abating of that wind shear. It diminishes in terms of the big shear, and we start to get more favorable shear environment out here. You see that? So again, signs are pointing toward September, maybe the first, second, third week of September will be rolling with tropical activity again. And then lastly, here's the pattern, kind of the big picture pattern, the European, I'm starting this at 204 hours next Saturday. And you can see this is kind of a threatening pattern. Look at this trough, not so bad when we get on in toward uh, the following Tuesday, September the 2nd, but uh, that'll deflect stuff. But look what's coming, this big ridge out in the Atlantic. Look at this. We get way on out, about two weeks out, and look what you've got here. A big ridge just dominating the Atlantic, sending everything in that direction, okay? Big breaks in the ridge would allow something to escape north, and that's what we're looking at. What about the GFS ensembles? Does that show the same thing? Some little subtle differences, but it sort of gets to the same thing. You see that big ridge building in over the uh, western Atlantic. When you see that, that is a signal that you could have a landfalling hurricane if there's a hurricane to be out there to potentially landfall. So we're going to have to watch the pattern. The next week or two, we're out of business. We're shut down. We're out of order for the most part unless something can sneak into the Gulf. And even then, there's a low chance because of you've got a, a, a big cold front sitting down there with shear. So... Uh, but uh, we're going to watch it. Beyond that, we're looking that business may be picking back up again. In the meantime here, uh, covering the states tonight, got a, a flash flood watch down here in uh, basically around Augusta, Savannah, and into Charleston, Beaufort. A lot of these thunderstorms are producing very high rainfall rates, and you've got a lot of uh, storms here around in those areas, upstate Greenville, South Carolina, down in toward, um, you know, Athens and places like that, south uh, the Gulf Coast areas here down in the southeast and the south central uh, portion of the country here. Monsoonal flow is alive and well. You've got scattered showers here, and a little cluster that's prompted a severe thunderstorm warning that's moving into southern Minnesota as well. Now, if we take a look at the overnight radar, See those clusters of thunderstorms up here kind of die down a little bit. Everything will die down in the south, too, as we lose the heating of the day. But look what happens overnight here. We saw this earlier when I did my earlier video today. South Dakota looking under the gun for a, me a mesoscale convective system potentially getting its act together, rolling through the overnight hours and approaching uh, Minnesota as we get on, or Minneapolis, rather, as we get on into tomorrow morning, maybe 10, 10 o'clock or so. So we'll watch that. Then scattered showers break back out again later on. And there are your high temperatures for tomorrow. And this is really uh, the end of the show here, folks. But I just want to show you the highs. It's going to be 70s and 80s up here across the northern tier in the Great Lakes, Ohio Valley, and uh, up in the northeast, back down the eastern slopes. The Abs got some northeasterly winds, courtesy of Aaron, and they are funneling that chillier air out of the northeast down the eastern slopes. Everybody else out here in the 80s and 90s is going to be muggy, very, very hot, and got heat advisories and extreme heat warnings. We'll look at that in a little bit more detail tomorrow, but that's what's going on out here in the western portion of the country. Dew points are surging, folks, but that ain't going to last. I got some good news for you, and I'll give it to you in the morning because we've got a full episode coming up tomorrow, but look at this. Dew points in the 60s and 70s out here tomorrow, so it's going to be a muggy day. Showers and thunderstorms that form going to produce some tropical rainfall rates, so watch out for that. And that's the show for tonight. I appreciate you tuning in, and uh, thanks for all the support and all the good comments comment, subscribe, like, do, do all those things that helps YouTube push the channel out. So, you know, if you like what you see, help us get the word out. And certainly I appreciate all the support. Anyway, take care, folks. Have a great evening. Be back tomorrow with another update. See ya.